Antarctica, the last earthly frontier untouched by man. Cold, unpredictable, and relentless. In a landscape that at first appears devoid of life, what purpose is there in traveling to the farthest reaches of the Earth? Antarctica is in fact teeming with life. What seems otherworldly to humans is home to some of the world's most unique wildlife. Whales, seals, birds, and the most iconic animal of Antarctica, penguins. Of the 18 penguin species found worldwide, one offers perspective into Earth's rapidly changing climate. I've been an environmentalist and nature lover as long as I can remember. At an early age, I was awed by the beauty of the amazing wildlife we share this planet with. Climate change puts the future of all creatures at risk. Climate change is so abstract to so many people, I traveled to Antarctica to find ways to describe it. What I found was a personification of climate change in the Adelie penguin. When I first stepped foot on the Antarctic Peninsula, I was greeted by the chirping and trilling of hundreds of penguins. We're on the Antarctic Peninsula, and uh, there are Gen 2 penguins everywhere, and I almost just stepped on one. Um, I just got yelled at by a penguin. He just ah, at me. I encountered many penguin species while on the expedition. Chinstrap, Gen 2, Magellanic, and Macaroni. But one species I was not seeing as I had expected to was the Adelie. Why? They should have been there. Adelies only live in Antarctica. Here on the peninsula, we're at the northern edge of their range, and they go from here south. It seems like the Adelies, which are one of the southernmost penguins, are even retreating farther south. So, in general, the ones at the southern edge of their range are doing quite well, and the ones here in the peninsula area are declining. The populations of Adelie penguins seem to be declining because of food sources in this area and that is probably related to climate change. So the Antarctic Peninsula has warmed up almost more than anywhere else in the world over the past several decades, even four or five degrees. Uh, you can quibble a little bit about the numbers, but not the trend. It's getting warmer. That means there's less sea ice each year. And Antarctic krill is the main food source for the Adelie penguin and most of the other animals that live in this area. Sea ice is really the, the crux let's say, of the ecosystem in the Antarctic. So warming temperatures causing a reduction in the amount of annual sea ice or thinning in that sea ice means that it's around for less time during the year. So the longer there's sea ice and the more of it there is, the more phytoplankton has a chance to grow on the underside, which feeds the krill. And then the krill feeds literally everything else, uh, either directly or indirectly. So with warming temperatures and a reduction in sea ice, the the basis of the ecosystem, that phytoplankton and krill relationship um, could, could be drastically altered, could, could take a nosedive and that's gonna really hurt everything. So decline in sea ice is associated with a decline in the krill, a decline in the krill is associated with a decline in penguins. Over the course of my expedition, I only saw four Adelie penguins. Human-caused climate change is pushing these penguins further south as their food source becomes scarcer. Here in Antarctica, there isn't much further south for these animals to go. So many of the world's creatures stand at this same precipice, either adapt or perish. And adaptation doesn't come quickly or easily, especially in this part of the world where the climate is changing so rapidly and dramatically. It's easy to feel discouraged when thinking about the immensity of climate change. The future of the Adelie penguin and all wildlife depends on us protecting the natural world as we know it. You can help by staying informed, asking questions, and researching issues you care about. My journey to tell the story of climate change won't end here. Let's make sure the Adelie Penguin story doesn't either.